Welcome back. If you are new to the channel, I make games, and you can download many of my games from the link in the description below. Perhaps you just started making a game, or perhaps you burn out making one. Making games is hard, very hard, and one of the reasons is that we all start coding without really knowing the best practices of coding. Many times we just follow tutorials or copy paste code that will solve some of the issues, and we end up with a Frankenstein monster in front of us, and every time we want to update it, we break something else. We we spend months or years trying to fix it. The main problem is that we write or copy paste code without looking at the overall picture and we do not look for the best coding practices that will allow us to write clean and scalable code that can be reusable and easy to maintain. And in many cases we reinvent the wheel when we did not have to. To avoid part of this we need to use game programming patterns. These are ideas that have been used over and over in many games and applications until those got optimized and work pretty well. So today I'm going to give a high level overview of some of those patterns and continue with some other patterns in future videos. The first pattern is called game design pattern. The first one is singleton. Why does singleton means? It means only one. Why do you need one of something? For example, your audio manager. You only need one audio processor that will play any of your audio effects or music. Another example is your input controller that will handle player input like keyboard or game controller. Controllers. With just one, you can handle all of that. Single tones can be called from anywhere in your game. It's like a global variable. You make it easy to process actions, but not everything should be a single tone. Command. What is this used for? Imagine this. You are making your game and you hard code your input code in your main character with different actions or commands to perform. And it works. It moves and shoots. But if you want to remap buttons in your controller or keyboard, then you will have to modify all your code. But there is a much simpler way to do it, and that is by putting your controller code into a different place, not in the main character itself, and enable command actions like move, jump, shoot in your characters or entities. Then the controller will call those commands. If you program that way, your controller will be outside of any entity, so any controller can be used to control any entity. The beauty of that is that anything can be a controller, so keyboard and mouse can be one, game controller another, and AI or artificial intelligence can be another one. AI can control enemies the same way by calling those commands, making it very easy to manage. And you can swap at any time to any controller without the need to change much code. Just swap the controller and that's it. Commands allow you to control your entities without having to hard code actions. Observer or events. Ever wonder how achievements are controlling a game? Kill 100 enemies, do 100 jumps, do 100 push-ups, run 10 kilometers. Whatever the achievement is, you don't want to put the code into the physics, entities or character controllers. What you need to do is to tell that something happens by announcing it and there will be an observer looking at the list of things that happen every frame and based on that can take action so your code related to the action do not have any code related to the achievement inside making it more clear and easier to debug and program it can also be swapped with an event to make that announcement so at the end of your update of all game objects you use the observer to process all the notices giving you the option to centralize all the achievements in one place easy to debug and program instead of scattering all your achievements code everywhere prototype let's think for a few seconds i have multiple enemies in my game so if you are not aware of the amount of work to do you start creating a class per enemy and before you know you have dozens of classes one per enemy in your game so if you want to make games faster you need to reduce the amount of code you write so in this case in my game i created a single enemy type and have some variables and sprite changes that allows me to have a variety of looks and actions so we can store those variables and sprite names into a test file that is loaded by the game. So you can add different characters to the game by using a simple character structure in a text file, simplifying the enemy creation process. We will look into more details about this in the future, but having all the different configurations in external files allows you to test different scenarios without having to modify the source code, making the development process faster. And lastly, state machines. This is a way to simple put action to states into simple structures, for example, run, walk, jump, shoot, and so on. This can be a state of your character that usually works well for simple structures, but for more complex structures it becomes a burden and can easily become very hard to make it work. For example, what if you want to shoot and run at the same time? Will you create combinations as new states? What if you add a third state 
that can be combined with the others like flying that can really grow exponentially. In many game engines, stain machines are a feature, like in Unity 3D. For simple things and exclusive actions or states, it works perfectly. But if you have a combination of states, it won't work. I will share in future videos more about this and alternative solutions to combine state machines. And that's it for today. In the next few weeks, I will explore additional programming patterns that will help you make games faster. If you want to support my work, please click like and subscribe and click on the notification bell so you do not miss my next update. Thank you so much for watching my journey. See you next week.